Now that we have seen that we can find a separating hyperplane between a point and a closed convex set, which does not contain this point, uh, we are now able to generalize this to uh, a separation theorem uh, which guarantees the existence of a separating hyperplane between a closed convex and bounded set, uh, which replaces the point, and another closed convex set, convex set, and they should have no points in common. Um, so let's formulate a new theorem. Let C1 and C2 be subset of, uh, subsets of our usual finite dimensional inner product space, and they should be non-empty closed and convex. And uh, it's essential that one of these uh, subsets must be bounded uh, or compact, in other words. Um, and let C1 be uh, compact. It doesn't matter which one is compact, but one of them has to be bounded. Otherwise, the theorem might fail and we find counterexamples. And let C1 be compact. And this means, in our finite dimensional setting, bounded. Uh, moreover, let the intersection of C1 and C2 uh, be empty, which means that uh, there are no common points in C1 and C2. Okay, um, now I have all my stuff together. Then there exists some A in H um, with the usual norm of A can be chosen to be 1, um, such that. And um, what, what, is the, what is the goal? We have some set C1 here, we have a set C2, and we want to find a separating hyperplane. Um, normal vector here points in, in the direction of C1, and we want to have this buffer um, in between. So we want to have the infimum of Y1 in C1 over A Y1 to be bigger than the supremum of y2 in c2 of a y2. So whenever we have a point here, um, y1 and y2, then there should be this buffer in between. And this buffer should be uh, should be strictly positive. So the infimum would be like this zone here, uh, would, would be attained by this, uh, this parallel line here, and this should be strictly greater than this infimum here, so there is a gap between those two, uh, which is uh, expressed by this uh, greater sign without equality. Okay, uh, now let's get to the proof. And the idea is, of course, to use the separation of a point from a convex set, um, which was given by the, the previous theorem. And the trick here is that let C, this is the, the new set, and we define this to be C1 minus C2. And the minus here is in the sense of, uh, in, the, in, the, in the similar sense to the Minkowski sum. Uh, just here we have uh, C1 minus C2 with C1 in C1 and C2 in C2. For the Minkowski sum we had plus here. 
And in, an, analogously to the Minkowski sum, um, uh, this set is convex. I won't prove this here, but we have we have shown that the Minkowski sum of two sets is convex, and this is the Minkowski sum of C1 and minus C2. And we have zero is not in the set C. Why is that? Uh, well, if we had zero in the set C, then there, there would be some po common point C, uh, C1 equals C2, and this is forbidden by our uh, assumption here. So zero is not in C. So um, the only obstacle now, uh, if we want to uh, apply the previous theorem, is we have to show that the set C is closed. And for this, we, we need the boundedness of one of those sets. Um, uh, and the proof goes as follows. So we show that C is bounded. Yeah, not bounded, closed. Ooh. Show that C is closed. Um, how do we do that? Uh, of course, we have to take a sequence xn um, n greater or equal than zero in C with xn converging to some point x in H. And we have to show that the point x is also in C. So then uh, for all n greater or equal than 0, we have this decomposition. We have xn. Since this is in C, it can be written as xn1 minus xn2 with xn1 in C1 and Xn2 in C2. Okay, and now we use the the boundedness of or the compactness of one of these element uh, of the, one of these sets. In our case, it's C1, since um, C1 is compact. This sequence of xn1 is a sequence in C1, and therefore there exists a convergent subsequence um, xnk1 with index k of xn1 with index n. Okay, we have a convergence uh, subsequence of xn1, um, and we, we, we can give a name to the limit. So say, and now xn, let me check that I get the notation right, xnk1 converges to some x1 and sen since this is a sequence in C1, and uh, this uh, sequence, uh, the, the set C1 is closed, uh, um, we have x1 in C1. Now, uh, let's take a look at the uh, sequence xn2. Now, um, xn2, uh, and more concretely, the subsequence x and k2, where we use the same indices uh, as we have used in the in the x1 sequence, so x and k2. This is. Let's check here. X and k2. Bring this to the to the other side. Is x and k1 minus x and k. X and k1 minus x. Nk. Again, nk is the same subsequence we have used here to find 
a convergent subsequence in, within x1. And we know that this converges, x and k1 converges to x1, and x and k here is a subsequence of xn and therefore converges to x. And we have x and k is a sequence in C1, uh, in C2. C2 is closed and therefore the limit point is also in C2 since C2 is closed. Now Um, what can we say about x? So we have x. We have to write, we want to show that x is an element of c, which is c1 minus c2. So we have to write x as a difference between elements in c1 and c2. So we write x as x1 minus x1 minus x. So this x1 minus x1 is 0, then we have left minus minus x, which is x. Great. And this is in c1 minus c2. Okay. Um, and this is c. And therefore we have shown that c is closed. Okay, now we have a closed convex set which does not contain zero. So, by the previous, I guess I have to use a new pen. Let's use this one. By the previous, oh, much better, separation theorem. There exists um, also vector A with norm of A equals 1. Such that. And now what did we what did we write there? So we wrote the infima over y in c and c is c1 minus c2 and the infima over all the inner products of, of, of points y with a should be um, greater than the inner product of A with the point, the point being zero in our case. So we have this, and of course the inner product with the zero is zero. All right. So what can we say about the infimum over points in C1 minus C2? So we have zero is less than the infimum over. Now we can de decompose ev every point in C1 minus C2 in uh, points y1 and C1, y2 and C2, with y equals y1 minus y2. Okay, now we have um, now we have uh, basically a sum of two terms. So one term which, which only contains y1 and is a y1 and one term which only con uh, contains y2. And of course I forgot the minus here. So we have a y1 plus a minus y2. And 
Since these terms are separable, we can also separate these infima here over the two variables, since the other variable does not appear in, in so y1 does not appear in the right term and y2 does not appear in the left term. So, um, let's see what we have. We have um, this, that's good. So infimum over y1 and c1 of a y1 is greater than, and now we have minus infimum over minus a y2, which is the supremum over since minus the infimum of minus an expression is the supremum over the very same expression. We have supremum over y2 in c2, and here we have a y2, the both the minus, both the minuses from putting this on the other side, and this minus, they cancel out. And therefore we have this relation, and that's exactly what we wanted to prove. And we showed that there exists a strongly separating hyperplane um, between um, those two sets, C1 of C2, one of which needs to be bounded.